Okay, the date is the 6th of July and this is uh, my recording of the explanation of what happened on the 2nd of June in the road traffic accident that occurred between myself on my blue speed triple number plate <coughs> Kilo Papa 54 Hotel Tango Golf and the third party which was a black Nissan Duke, I think, uh, with number plate Whiskey Romeo 64 to Yankee Alpha. Um, <clears throat> and all of this took place at the Jurassic Roundabout in Weymouth and took place over roughly about five seconds. So, looking at the diagram which is <coughs> overlaid on the uh, map which I've got from Google Maps, um, I've depicted myself here in red and the third party in yellow and the car in front in blue and the traffic which is coming in from the other side of the roundabout in green. So in the first instance, uh, we can see that uh, I, I come in filtering and as I said, he was uh, slightly wide on the road. There was plenty of space, no problem. And the car in front moves off. I move into the space. I'm in the correct position in the lane. No problem, fairly standard stuff, really. <coughs> Not undifferent that I did on, on my actual motorbike test, in actual fact. Uh, so, I, I pull in to the space, uh, the, the roundabout is free, so I start to pull across the roundabout, and I'm in the correct lane, no problem. So, we can see that the uh, third party is, um, or must have, fairly violently pulled away um, to actually come up on my outside. Now, as I said, um, you know, sometimes people do make mistakes and they get into the wrong lane, and so you're always aware of that kind of thing. So I, I knew he was on my outside, and I was a little bit apprehensive about it, but still, you know, um, I expected him to pull off at the um, coming junction and uh, carry on round the roundabout myself. Now, as we get to this point here, it becomes a very different situation. This is a life or death situation for me, potentially, uh, because effectively he's cutting off my lane. Um, I, I've got no exit route, and my decision at this point is either that I have to break suddenly, and obviously I don't know what's behind me, and that could entail me being killed, or um, I've got to accelerate past him, um, which is dangerous because obviously I'm, I'm moving into a complex road situation. But I decided to actually accelerate away, which is fine on a motorbike. So I pull out into the um, correct exit and he obviously continued on behind me well behind me at this point so uh you know no problem that that's all that's all fine uh no no particular issues up to that point however i'm traveling at some speed he's traveling at some speed and i'm going into a, a fairly unknown situation okay so carrying on from there then uh we we exit the, the roundabout and I'm coming into the single road at some speed in an agitated state uh, and on my left hand side I have got a slip road. Now this road uh, that I'm actually on is the correct position in the road to not have to move anywhere. 
um, and the cars in the slip road have obviously got to pull across because the road um, uh, the slip road finishes and they have to be in the road by that point so they've either got to stop or they've got to um, you know pull into it um, as, as best they can and this is where the problem occurs with this slip road situation um, as you can see uh, I've illustrated here um, what what often happens is uh, you know with the green car you know it's fairly straightforward a bright green car you know you pull into the road away you go um, but the problem is with cars that do such as the dark green car is doing and, and they don't look in the mirror they give an inflection of uh, moving across the road and then change their mind and so they remain um, as if uh, nothing had actually happened still in the slip road and uh, being able to see that kind of thing is almost impossible for uh, you know anyone else to actually see that apart from me the third party and the person that's actually driving that car because they know what they've done um, it, it's uh, you know nearly nearly impossible to to be able to uh, you know see that situation going on that's happening in a in a split second so um this matter of me being confused or you're confused about what's actually occurred um you know i i think it's originated over my response to um the reason for for my breaking and i would argue that uh, given the fact that i've come into uh, you know, potentially uh, dangerous situation with cars coming across on me um, in an agitated state because I, of what occurred on the roundabout. Uh, it, it's very easy to, uh, you know, kind of misjudge what's going to go on to, to overcompensate. Um, but that shouldn't matter. That That shouldn't matter because... I've, you know, I'm in a situation um, that uh, has, has caused me to uh, uh, not be entering into it in the, the correct frame of mind. And if a car looks like they're going to pull out in front of me and I put the brakes on, it doesn't matter, you know, because uh, I, I feel that, uh, that that situation warrants it and, and that's fine because I don't expect a car to be right up behind me at, at speed and it's going to hit me, you know, what what the third party should have been doing is actually uh, looking at what was occurring with the slip road and what he was doing was um, focusing purely on me and that has uh, been what, what has, um, you know, caused this situation to occur uh, and the fact that I can't remember exactly what occurred in that one split second um, which, which uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest about that and I'm going with what I said at the time, which is I believed a car was going to come across in front of me and I had to put the brakes on. And, you know, the, the idea that some uh, witness is, is going to refute that is ludicrous beyond any stretch of the imagination you know the, this witness could have only have been behind in the traffic as we were coming on to the roundabout <coughs> it's extremely it, it's a very short space of time for starters to actually uh, witness it there's a huge amount of things going on which he's got to be aware of to understand what's occurring and the the whole view is obscured by all kinds of things uh by the third party by other vehicles by the roundabout you know there's there's a million and one reasons why you know any kind of testimony by some witness is is just a complete waste of time um it, it really is you know uh, but what it's fully possible that uh he could see without any trouble in any kind of way whatsoever was what occurred on the roundabout i.e i was in the right hand lane where i should have been coming around the roundabout and the third party was attempting to go around the outside of me in the wrong lane uh i, I would fully believe that he could have witnessed that in which case it, it, you know he'll be shooting the third party in the foot and not uh you know doing any favors for him at all 
So, you know, when when we actually look at the, uh, uh, you know, situation with what he's claiming actually occurred, uh, <laughs> the the concept that somebody on a motorbike is going to deliberately put their brakes on is so ridiculous. It, it just doesn't even begin to to warrant uh you know looking at if you put your brakes on in a car and you're you're coming off a roundabout and somebody goes into the back of you it's mildly annoying if you do that in a motorbike on a motorbike uh, somebody goes into the back of you you could easily be dead and so that argument presupposes that i don't mind dying and i think we can all agree that that is ridiculous uh, you know what's occurred is what I'm showing to you here, and uh, you know trying to say that I did this deliberately is is just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So moving on from that, uh, you know the the third party is claiming that I hit his wind mirror, and um, I, I want to say that uh, yeah that just illustrates the fact that he's lying. Um, if you hit uh, if you clip a wind mirror with a car, uh, the wind mirror breaks off and it's annoying. If you hit a wind mirror on a motorbike, you come off. And you don't know how you're going to come off. You could easily you know, go down in, in front of the front wheel. Uh, the bike could pull you across the road into oncoming traffic. You could uh, come off the back and smash the, the back of your head. You could rip your foot off. Any number of horrific situations could actually occur. So, uh, you know, the concept that I hit his wing mirror um, is it, it, then going to fly in the face uh, of the fact that I presume he's going to say that I, I put my brakes on with absolutely no reason, which I've already said is, is absolutely ridiculous. So, <clears throat> you know, I, they don't have their ducks in a row. Uh, you know, they're, they're claiming one thing and they're going to claim another thing. And, you know, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. He, he went into the back of me, as you can see uh, uh, at the end, because he was following me too closely, going too fast, and it's as simple as that. He is entirely responsible for the situation. And I would argue that, uh, you know, this, this situation has been precipitated by the fact that, uh, you know, he's, he's perceived some slight... At the roundabout situation, which is just crazy. That's absolutely crazy to do that. You know, what he did at the roundabout is ridiculous, and at any point he could have actually taken control and, uh, you know, just, just accepted the fact, pulled in behind me, and uh, followed on round the roundabout, gone home and had tea. But instead of doing that, what he's done is put me in, in a, a lethal situation. And it is lethal. Uh, there's no two ways about that. If he cut off my exit and, and I'd driven into the side of him, there's uh, an island on the exit uh, with, with posts on. I could have hit one of those posts and, and killed myself. Uh, you know, any, any number of things could have happened. So... You know his his actions have actually precipitated what's occurred. So you know to, to take any other view than he is entirely responsible for what's occurred is is just absolutely ridiculous. There's no weight to anything that any witness is going to say, and I haven't done anything wrong. I've dealt with the situation as as best I can, and and, and for that, what I've had is uh, you know being knocked off uh, I'm out of pocket I've got no motorbike and, and you know the, the list just goes on and on and now, now we're kind of presupposing that w what I'm saying is has got no validity to it in, in some way which is just absolutely ridiculous uh, you know and in, in I really want this situation to be wrapped up and wrapped up as fast as uh, can be done with uh, the the people that are legally representing me actually having some kind of faith in in what I'm actually telling them by looking at you know the, the this situation as it is uh, you know you can see the facts in front of you as I'm telling you and and that's what's occurred